five minutes together. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Hey, it's Bristol. Welcome back. And today I'm in Vineyard Park in Freehold, New Jersey. The Super Fun Park is located on the corner of Center and Jackson Streets. But it wasn't always here. Come on, let's go back in time and I will tell you a story. In the 1950s, three duplex houses stood right here along Center Street. A duplex is one house that is split in half by a thin wall. Tex and Marianne Vineyard lived in the first duplex, and Bart Haynes and his family lived on the other side of the wall. It was a busy neighborhood with a huge noisy rug mill across the street. In 1956, Bart Haynes was only eight years old, just like I am today, when he saw Elvis Presley on the Ed Sullivan TV show. At that moment, Bart knew he wanted to make music, but the only problem was that he didn't have an instrument. As Bart grew into a teenager, he enjoyed hanging out with his friends and listening to music while he shot pool in the back of Ring's Barbershop. His all-time favorite thing to do was to walk across Center Street to Kayazo's music store and gaze at the instruments through the glass. Mr. C played the Beatles music. That music inspired kids from a small town to dream big. You should dream big too. Bert got a job at Sorrento's sub shop on South Street and he rhythmically chopped onions every day. He earned enough money to buy himself a set of drums. His friend George Fees shared his dream of making music and suggested they start a band. George could sing and play the guitar. They worked out all the details while they ate pizza at Federici's. George used Castile shampoo, similar to this. It made his hair shine and he felt good about that. That is exactly how making music made him feel, so he decided to name the band The Castiles. Word got out in Freehold that a band was starting and some kids showed up to practice in Bart's living room. They banged on their instruments until Tex Vineyard pounded on the door. What is that noise? It sounds worse than the clanging looms from the rug mill, Tex yelled. The cast girls decided to play the only song they knew called Boys. And then George asked if Tex would be their manager. He could hear they needed some help. When he went back to his side of the duplex that night, Tex asked Marion to make room in their house for the band to practice. He cleared out the dining room table and chairs. The Castillos had a manager, a practice hall with flowered wallpaper, and an ironing board in the corner. And it was perfect. George's girlfriend, Jenny, said her brother, Bruce, played the guitar a little. George knocked on Bruce's door and invited him to practice. He didn't know a lot, and Tex told him to go home and come back when he could play a little bit better. Bruce went home and listened to the radio and practiced what he heard. He came back the next night and played for Tex. The song sounded just like the ones on the radio, and Tex said, You're in. Tex promoted the Castillos and came home every Friday with his paycheck and got them new guitar strings, picks, and whatever they needed. Tex was an amateur photographer and loved to take and develop pictures of the band. Marianne made lots of scrapbooks of the boys. Let's listen as the Castillos play a band favorite, Baby Eye, from 1966. <laughs> hungry, Marion provided plenty of bologna and cheese sandwiches, tuna, fish, and food down soda. She even taught the band members, sisters, and girlfriends how to cook spaghetti and biscuits. She threw birthday parties for the boys and always baked a cake. The icing wrapped around the cake like her love and held the kids together when they needed it. Bruce and George had back-to-back -back birthdays on September 22nd and 23rd. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Every year, she made an origami dollar and placed it in a card. She continues this tradition for many years. The vineyards gave kids from their town a safe place to practice what they loved and encouraged them. In May 1967, Bart left the band to join the Marine Corps. He served our country in Vietnam, and on October 22, 1967, five months later, he was killed at the age of 19. 
He was the first soldier from Freehold to be killed in the war. There is a cross in Freehold with his name on it. George Feast played music his entire life and also enjoyed woodworking. He was the owner of the Vineyards Displaced Dining Room Table. He shortened the legs and made it a coffee table for his house. The boy who learned to play songs by listening to the radio was Bruce Springsteen, one of the greatest rock and rollers of all time. Let's listen to what he said about the vineyards at the de dedication of the park. And I'm, I always think of Tex and, and, and Marion Vineyard, whose kindness and compassion and uh, amazing understanding and openness was such an important, important part of, of, of that time in my life. Um, we all should take the time to discover who is knocking on the doors of our lives. A simple act of kindness could change the world. Thanks for joining me on my rock and adventure to Vineyard Park in Freehold, New Jersey. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you know every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye!